So our bull case was $1.5 million in five years. So that would have been 2027. We still have time. And we still think that's going to be right. Um, if you just look at the institutional push into Bitcoin, this new asset class, they have to consider it. There are 19.6 million Bitcoin out there right now. And the highest it will ever go is 21 million. Uh, well, okay, there's real scarcity value. And what, what is going to happen? The price increase for every institutional dollar pushing in now is going to be much higher than it was last year, two years ago. Kathy Wood, the founder, CEO, and CIO of ARK Invest, a leading investment management firm specializing in actively managed exchange-traded funds focused on disruptive innovation, is renowned for her staunch belief in Bitcoin. Firm have made significant investments in the leading cryptocurrency, particularly with the advent of spot Bitcoin ETFs, which have witnessed remarkable success. During a recent interview with Peter Diamandis, a prominent American entrepreneur and co-founder of Singularity University, Wood discussed the surging demand for Bitcoin, largely attributed to the introduction of spot Bitcoin ETFs. She expressed unwavering confidence in Bitcoin's potential, predicting a substantial 23% price surge within the next 36 months. Wood's optimism is rooted in her belief that the increasing adoption of Bitcoin ETFs will propel prices even higher in the years to come. Wood also highlighted the success of ARK Invest Bitcoin ETF among the spot Bitcoin ETFs approved by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission earlier in the year. Ranking as the third Bitcoin ETF by total assets and flow, it has attracted significant investment, with $2.038 billion in assets and $1.563 billion in flow. Wood anticipates continued growth in ETF adoption, especially as more brokers begin offering them to their clients, further bolstering Bitcoin's ascent in the financial markets. Number three, you know, this was David against Goliath. And, you know, uh, so this is a, 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 a very nice win for us. Now, we're not finished. And in fact, in our business, what's interesting is the wirehouses, which dominate our customers. So Morgan Stanley, all the advisors at these wirehouses, Morgan Stanley, UBS, Merrill Lynch at B of A, Wells Fargo, not one of them has approved Bitcoin on its platform. That hasn't even happened yet. And those are our primary clients. When that happens, wait yep. until you see. Explosion. This is not just a technology. Um, it's a new asset class, right? And beyond that, it's a global monetary system. You know, it is the first global uh, private, meaning no government oversight, digital and decentralized, rules-based. That's the most important word here. Rules-based monetary system in history. It's a big idea. It's, you know, we're going to get uh, into, if these institutions really want to own it, what I found fascinating recently, just learned it this morning, is uh, typically when you go through a, a price move, a Bitcoin price move to the upside, you usually see long-term holders, which is a metric we monitor. It's an on-chain analytics metric. Um, and it means people who have not moved or wallets that have not moved their Bitcoin in 155 days or more. <laughs> yes. Well, normally when you go through a price move to the upside, a very nice one like we've seen in the last year, that tends to start moving down. And it did that, true to form, but it has reversed in recent days because what we learned is uh, uh, GBTC sold some of its Bitcoin. So that was, those wallets hadn't been changed in a long time, right? Now that is done, at least for the time being, now that is done and um, it's going back up again as the price goes up. That's highly unusual. And I think it is because um, the long-term holder is saying, why would I sell now when I know all these institutions, which own nothing, own nothing in this realm, in this new asset class, they have to consider it because it is a new asset class. In the financial world, uh, exponential, that concept, the last time investors heard it was during the tech and telecom bubble. And for them, 
that end ended badly. Now they just don't believe it. They don't believe it's possible to sustain growth rates at 15, 20, 25 percent plus per year. But what we think is going to happen is not exponential growth, but super exponential growth as we get the convergence between among technologies out there. We think in the next five to 10 years, uh, you will not recognize the world as we know it today. When we're trying to help people understand the same thing, again, not just investors, but anybody, um, we often say the last time we had multiple innovation platforms evolving at the same time was in the early 1900s, late 1800s, early 1900s. And and absolutely right. That's what you know got everyone off the farms and uh, into the new world, right? Uh, this is the same, but it's on steroids. People are scared. And uh, they are hugging benchmarks because they don't want to go through another tech and telecom bust. They don't want to go through another financial meltdown. People are talking about, you know, uh, uh, another tech, uh, another technology hype cycle here. So these are trigger words for them right now. So here's the irony. Here's the irony. In the late 90s, I was there. In the late 90s, they, this idea of the internet captured the investor's imagination, and they started valuing companies on on number of eyeballs potentially in 10 to 20 years. Too much capital chase, too few opportunities, too soon. And it ended badly. The technologies weren't ready and they were too expensive. So, but what people, what, what people do not understand is the seeds for everything happening now were sown during the, the 20 years that ended in the tech and telecom bubble. They've been germinating for 25, 30 years. We are ready for prime time. And unlike the late 90s, they're they're running away. They're running for the hills. What are the hills? They're benchmarks. It's ridiculous.